A reclusive Scottish man in Old Blue it plays poker with pure gold coins only to be done in on the night of a blizzard. Two armed men rob a train stealing gold ore from prospectors from the Idaho Gold Rush only to be hanged moments later. But where is the lost gold? A Spanish man shows up in a small town purchasing items with gold nuggets only to mysteriously disappear into the mountains. Years later, his skeletal remains are the only indication of the location of the lost treasure. A man named Thomas Douglas arrived in Washington in the late 1890s. He was a very reclusive man. The people in the area didn't really know much about him, and he pretty much just kept to himself. He was also a quite wealthy man. He was the son of an earl in Scotland, and he lost standing there because he married a common woman. The word got out that he had married this commoner, and he wasn't accepted in the area anymore, and he headed for America. He showed up in Blewett, Washington in the 1890s, and he staked a mining claim. However, he was a recluse. He never really went out of his house. He hardly ever went to the mine. He didn't really mine much. The only time anybody ever saw him really leave his house was when he would get on a train and he would go to Leavenworth and then he would come back and nobody ever really knew why he was going there, but this happened every once in a while. The only notable contact that anybody really had with Thomas Douglas was when he would host poker night. Every once in a while, he would call up his friends and invite them over to his house and they would play cards. The other men that were invited to his house were typically kind of scourges of, of society that were kind of like him. They weren't really accepted and people didn't really know much about him, but they were kind of the strange people in the town. In 1905, after returning from one of his mysterious trips to Leavenworth, he hosted one of these poker nights. Everything was going well, but after a few drinks, Douglas was losing his money, he was getting a little bit drunk, and he was pretty loose, and he decided to go for his backup money. So he went over underneath his bed, he grabbed a large wooden box, he pulled it out, opened it up, and inside was a bunch of gold coins. He proceeded to gather $5, $10, and $25 gold coins, and proceeded to play poker the rest of the night. At the end of the night, he simply put the money back in the box, closed the box, pushed it under his bed, and saw his friends to the door. A few nights after this, a woman that was the neighbor of Douglas happened to be feeding her baby by the window, and this was the middle of the night, it was completely dark, but she saw someone that she thought was Douglas outside, out in the field, burying something in the field. Of course, this woman didn't know anything about the poker game. She didn't know anything about the wooden box with the gold coins. She just saw someone out in the middle of the night digging a hole and burying something. So she didn't really know what was going on. She had no context of the situation. This is just simply something that she saw one night. That very night, after she saw this mysterious person out burying something, a blizzard rolled in and completely covered the area in snow, several feet of snow. It was a very, very large snowstorm and completely covered everything for the rest of the winter. Soon after this, just several days after this, Douglas hadn't been seen in the area, so somebody went to check on him and found him dead. He had actually died of a stroke. So his friends caught wind of this and decided to go break into his house. They did and they went looking for the box with the gold coins and they didn't find anything. They had also been planning on robbing him anyway, so they probably weren't very good friends to begin with. But these two men that were supposedly his friends that broke into his house, couldn't find the box, uh, they started talking. They went down to the local saloon, to the markets, and they told everybody that they could about that poker night where there had been that box of gold coins. Obviously in a small town, the word got around very quickly and and it made its way to the woman that saw someone burying something the night of the blizzard in that field. So this woman obviously made this connection. The person that was behind Douglas's house burying something must have been Douglas and what he was burying was that box of gold coins because now he knew that these two people knew about his box of gold. So he was burying it to hide it from them. By the end of winter, everyone in town knew about it. When the snow melted, everyone was out in his yard, in the field behind his house, digging it up, trying to find this wooden box with gold coins. The townspeople never found this box of gold coins. So either someone found it in his cabin when they found his body, someone found it in the field and just was able to keep it a secret, or 
That box is still out there today. In the 1880s, a Spaniard showed up in Dulles and opened an account at the French and Company Bank. The Spaniard would head up into the mountains, he would come back with gold nuggets, he would deposit money into the bank, and being that this was a very remote location and a small community, the locals began to take notice. It also doesn't help that almost all of the locals at the time were prospectors themselves. They were up there looking for gold. Most of them had mines and they were getting gold, but nothing like what this Spaniard was bringing back. It was very clear from the beginning that this Spaniard was bringing back gold nuggets that were pure and that were much more valuable than anything anybody else was finding. So the locals came up with plans to try and follow the Spaniard up into the mountains to find out where his mine was and to take it from him. But the Spaniard knew that the locals weren't getting the kind of gold that he was, so he figured that they were probably going to try and follow him and find out where his mine was. So the Spaniard was way ahead of them. He had planned out different routes that he was going to take where he could backtrack and lose them. He had tracks all the way through the mountains. Not only that, but he also put on his mule's shoes backwards so the people couldn't tell which way he was coming or going. So he would go up in the mountains, he would backtrack, he would take this trail, he would take that trail, and nobody knew exactly where he was going. So when they went up into the mountains and tried to track him, they couldn't do it. They would just end up running around all over the place. All the prospectors could figure is that he was between Mount St. Helens and Mount Adams. This was actually quite a distance from the bank. So when these prospectors would go looking for him, they were traveling, traveling large distances trying to find him, trekking their way all through these mountains, and they just knew the, the, the region that he was in, but couldn't really pinpoint where he was actually going. After a few failed attempts of the locals trying to track the Spaniard up to his mine, they were back in town, and they were waiting on him to return, and they waited, and they waited, and the Spaniard never showed up. Instead, the local Yakama natives started showing up with those same gold nuggets that the Spaniard used to show up with. So the locals immediately knew that these natives had either killed and robbed the Spaniard or they found out where his mine was. Though questioned by the locals, the natives never gave up where they got the gold and they didn't come back anymore. They just showed up a couple times buying things with these gold nuggets. So it was expected by the locals that they didn't actually know where the mine was and that they had either robbed or killed and robbed the Spaniard. Years later, near Spirit Lake, the skeleton of a man and a mule were found. The skeleton that was found was expected to be the skeleton of this Spaniard as that was the area that these people knew that his mine was in. And so they believed that the natives had killed the Spaniard and robbed him and that his mine was still up there somewhere. There are also accounts of this story that say that the Lost Spaniard mine is in a cave and hidden behind a waterfall. Whether or not that mine is in a cave hidden behind a waterfall, it is believed that it is near near Spirit Lake, and that mine has never been found. In 1860, large amounts of gold was discovered in Idaho. Small amounts of gold had been discovered before this, but the gold that was discovered around Pierce uh, near Idaho City caused thousands and thousands of prospectors to flood the area, and this became sort of an Idaho gold rush. The easiest way for prospectors coming from the west to get to Idaho was to come down the Columbia River. They established a small port town on the Columbia River called Wallula. So prospectors would come down the Columbia River to this port Wallula and then travel over to Walla Walla. Walla Walla was a staging area where they would gather all of their supplies and get ready for anyone heading to the east to go into Idaho. To make travel easier between Wallula and Walla Walla, they established a railroad. This railroad was not what you would think of today. Its tracks were made out of wood and in Anytime that there was damage or the tracks started rotting, they would wrap it in rawhide. So this was a very rudimentary kind of railroad that was going between these two places that was carrying these prospectors back and forth. So this short railroad between these two towns was carrying prospectors and gold back and forth all the time and was a prime target for any outlaws that may want to 
to rob these prospectors. So that's exactly what happened. In the short time that this railroad was operational, two bandits boarded the train on the express car, stole some gold, jumped off, and they almost got away with it. They had a plan to head into Wallula, hop on a riverboat, head up to Portland where they could mingle in with society and be lost. However, carrying all of this gold obviously weighed them down and it took a lot longer for them to get to Wallula than they expected. And when they arrived there, the riverboat that they were going to take up to Portland wasn't there. They knew at this point word had spread and that people were gonna be looking for them. So they decided to he head outside of town and bury the gold that they had stolen. Shortly after they buried the gold, the posse that was out looking for them caught up with them and they interrogated and interrogated, but these outlaws didn't say anything. They didn't give away the location, but the posse hanged them. So before I say there's treasure buried outside of Wallula, Washington, and it's still there today and you can go find it, there's a problem. There are actually three Wallula Washingtons. The first Wallula was developed in 1860 for this port to support the railroad that was going back and forth between Wallula and Walla Walla. This town didn't last long at all. It was just there to support this port and the railroad. Once the gold started to dry up, then people left and all that was left was a few houses and a few people that were living out there. But in 1880, a new rail depot was established about a mile to the east of where the old one was. So everybody kind of uprooted and gathered around this new rail depot and so there's a new town of Wallula about a mile away from where the old town was. And that was actually a bustling community that lasted about 70 or 80 years until 1953 when a dam was built to create Lake Wallula. At this point, the town actually had to be moved because all of that area was going to be underwater under Lake Wallula. Nobody knows where they buried this treasure, but no one has ever found it either. So it could be on land, but most likely if you're going to find this, you're going to have to go scuba diving. Please select this next video for more hidden treasures. If you enjoyed the story, don't forget to like, leave comments and subscribe. Thanks for watching.